नमो तस्सा भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसा नमो तस्सा भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसा नमो तस्सा भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसा गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन एंड विश यू हैप्पी चाइनीस न्यू ईयर एस वेल सो वी आर कमेंसिंग आवर प्रोग्राम व्हिच वी फ्रॉम द प्लेस वेयर वी स्टॉप्ड लास्ट टाइम uh we did almost all, we we discuss about all the kamaja rupas we are in the rupa chapter actually we discuss all the kamaja rupas and uh, we couldn't uh, uh, do the special uh, lecture about uh, rupas related to kama which are not directly called kamaja rupas but which have somewhat relationship with the past karma so uh, that is a very interesting topic which we am which i am going to discuss today it's a, it's a quite large topic uh, because uh, of, uh, a lot of information is is there and we need to understand how this uh, this concept this idea about related karma uh, rupas related to karma uh, so if i uh, briefly recap what we have done so far we talked about uh, rupa in this chapter rupa and we also talked discussed about rupa kalapas with rupa we get kalapa then we had rupa santana or rupa sarira rupa sarira and we had rupa santana i just wrote it again we had rupa then rupa sari rupa kalapa then we have rupa sarira a lot of kalapas were called sarira and rupa santana santana and sarira can be interchangeable then with kalapa a generation of kalapas were called rupa santati this was our main in first introduction to remember rupa are the irreducible elements of the physical world so a physical thing that we conceive or perceive uh, can be if 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 we put it into uh, analytical uh, reduction uh the things that we get at the end which cannot be reduced any further into its components were called rupas that's also uh, one of the characteristics of ultimate realities when we are uh, reaching a reality we we tend to divide it and try to come to the uh, irreducible part of the uh, reduction reduction then um but this need to be discussed in detail because uh sometimes we may get we may think about a object that really doesn't exist like 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 the god and so forth and uh, even still we redu- reduce the god sometimes we may be able to uh, get into a uh, element that doesn't exist in reality so this is sort of a philosophical debate a question that can be raised so one way of understanding ultimate realities is reducing uh it into components and finding out uh, uh the reality the thing or nature that cannot be reduced any further but that only doesn't uh it's not a very uh, because it can be argued in many ways so uh another way of looking is uh, if a, if a certain reality ha- performs a certain function if 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 something performs a certain function actual function which causes actual happenings then that is also ultimate reality right because uh, for instance chitta we can understand it through analysis at the same time it does the knowing action of knowing so because it it actually happens we cannot deny the fact that the chitta is happening so so in the in that sense if some reality performs a certain function if some nature performs a certain function and if that function can be known we call it ultimate reality another way of looking into it we can uh, give definitions from the uh, doctrine as well and if any reality anything that any anything that can be dispelled if something is liable to removing or dispelling pahana then it's a reality if something can be developed the capacity can be increased 
in terms of uh, generations, then it is a uh, reality. And if something can be attained, then that also is a reality. So likewise, we have various explanations, but in, gen in, in brief, we say uh, Rupa are the uh, ultimate essence, uh, is the ultimate essence, or uh, Rupa is the irreducible natures of the physical world. So everything physical is made out of Rupa according to Theravada teachings. Then these Rupas uh, are produced by four major causes. One is Karma, then mentalities, Chitta, mentalities, is not only Chitta, Chitta and Chesika both together. Then we have Utu, Tejo, another Rupa element and Oja, Ahara. These are the four uh, causes of the rising of Rupa or for the uh, causes which produce the Rupa. Then in the previous lectures, we took a lot of time to explain what are the Rupas made by Karma. Kamaja Rupas we call, Kamaja Rupas. And I was planning to finish the entire, ch entire part of the Kamaji Rupas in the last semester, but due to the initiation of our institute, I was very quite, uh, I had some uh, busy, I was quite busy with the work and also some issues were there, so I couldn't finish the last topic. So there are Rupas, now in the ultimate sense, Rupas are produced either by, either by one, of, either one of these four causes. So based on that, we categorize Rupa into four groups. Kamaja Rupas, Kamaja Rupa, we write capital R, Kamaja Rupa, Chittaja Rupa, Uttuja Rupa, and Aharaja. Rupa. These are the four types of Rupa we find. Mm. These are the four. One, two, three, and four. According to the teachings, any Rupa which we can find, any of the elements, material elements, should be, we should be able to categorize them into any of these four. There is no Rupa that doesn't belong to, that doesn't belong to any of them. There is no such Rupa. So we discussed about the Kamaja Rupas. We detailly discuss what are the Kamaja Rupas. And then among the Chittaja, Utuja and Aharaja Rupas, there are some matter that have a connection with the Kamma, but not directly produced by Karma. They are not concretely produced by Karma, but they have a relationship with the Karma. May, it can be a linear relationship. It can be one of the major causes of production. It can be an effect made by the Karma. So there are various ways that we can look into this. But within the literature, in the sutras or in the commentaries, it has been mentioned this was caused by karma. Due to, this happened due to karma. This phenomenon, material phenomenon occurred due to karma. So what does this imply? It says that karma has an effect, uh, has an effect. It has affected the rupa. So, but in Abhidhamma perspective, in order to be called a Kamaja Rupa, it has to be directly produced by karma. It has to be produced by karma. It should be an outcome of the force that remained within the mind stream when we perform the certain action, a karma, good or bad karma. If a Rupa is not such a production of the karma, but still have a relationship with the karma, we call Rupas related to Karma, not Kamaja Rupas. Not the Kamaja Rupas, but Rupas related to Karma. So within the literature, we can find some information when we fetch from various places in the doctrine, from the doctrine, we find some Rupas that are related to Karma, but not Kamaja, that should not be designated as Kamaja Rupas in terms of Abhidhamma perspective, approach. So that is our topic today. Rupas related to karma. So th these Rupas we are talking today, in this fourfold category, they fall in either any of them, any of these categories. We are talking about these Rupas today. We are talking about Chitta Jarupa, Uttu Jarupa, Aharaj Rupas, but has a relationship with karma. 
So we are not talking about Kamaj Rupas today. So we are not going to emphasize any of these Rupas. We have already discussed about them. Here we are talking about Rupas related to Karma, but not Karmaja Rupas. Right? Not Karmaja Rupas. That is our topic today. So we move on to, I uh, will be discussing few points. You can see 2.152. From, till from uh, 2.159, there are eight major points, eight and there are sub, sub points as well, eight. First one is Kamma Pachaya, I list them down one by one, Kamma Pachaya, and this is number one, we will go to a new page, Kamma Pachaya. Kama Pachya has few implications. Kama Pachya. Sometimes it refers to the body parts of living beings such as hair, skin, tail and horn. For example, if you think about our body, our limbs are Kama Pachya. Kama Pachya. Bodies of living beings are called Upadhinaka Sarira. We have a boy, bodies are also called Upadhinaka. If we consider this as a living body, for instance, right? If this is a living body, this is called Upadhinaka. Upadhinaka means something that is taken by karma. Or actually something that is taken by karma. Taken by karma means produced by karma, which is a result of karma. Result of a karma that could be taken by defilements, that could be cognized or attached by defilements. So it is a production of a Lokiya karma. That's called Upadhinaka. Upadhinaka are the productions of Lokiya karma. I think in Abhidhamma we study Upadhin Upadhanya Dhamma, right? But here, so that is a direct production of karma. Here, any reality that has been produced by karma, but it doesn't, it doesn't need to be a direct relation, direct relationship. For example, think about the water, fish, if you think this is fish, okay, fish are swimming in the water, right, fish are swimming in the water. Fish are produced by, from their uh, parents, right, eggs and all, but fish cannot sustain without the water. So water is a major cause for them. If there was no water, there was no way they could be born. They are, they are not born on the land, right? So water is the surface for them to be born. So likewise, a human's body, a person's body have four types of rupa. Kamaja, KJ, Chittaja, CJ, Utuja, UJ, Aharaja, J, right? These four types of rupas. Body is considered with four types of rupas. But out of the four, the major part is the utuja rupas. Utuja, because kamaja, ticha, chittaja, and aharaja disappear immediately after the death. Kamaja rupas together with the death, chittaja and aharaja, few mind moments after death. Because the chittaja rupas which were produced and close to death would remain for a few mind moments, even after the person has died. Aharaja is the same. Utuja Rupas would remain. So, when we die, we know that there is not such a great difference in the body. Yes, it gets rotten. It, get, it rots and uh, it, uh, the changes do occur. But we see immediately after death, there we cannot feel much difference in the, in the, in the quantity of the Rupa. Actually, it becomes heavier in, the, in one sense. So, therefore, the bulk, most amount of rupas in our body are utuja rupas. Are utuja rupas. But still, when you think about the generation of rupas, karma, karma is the main reason for this body to sustain. If there was no karma, there would, this body would not have happened on the first place. So according to Abhidhamma explanations, the Kamaj Rupas arise first and then the, uh, the remaining Rupas starts to grow. So I shall be explaining in, in our lectures that uh, if you think about the scientific findings as well, because we know that two cells of, from mother and father 
are surely in our body, either with the sp in the sperm and in the egg. So based on that, our bo body develops. So uh, that uh, combined cell, sperm and egg cells, which we get, 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 get combined, so that becomes active, that becomes live. It became a living being due to the arising of Kamaj Rupas within that cell. If you think about, if you take a scientific approach into this, but still, scientific means uh, getting some science into it. So still, Kama was a great reason for the entire body, whatever we explain, whatever way we explain. So therefore, the entire body is called Upadinaka. Upadinaka. Without karma, it would not sustain. And when our rebirth, uh, karma exhausts, our body dies, right? So therefore, uh, our bodies are called Kamaj Upadinaka. These Upadinaka Rupas, Upadinaka Rupas are also called Kamma Pachaya. Are also called Kamma Pachaya. Kamma Pachaya. Right? So, uh, that's why it says, according to the Visuddhi Magga, Rupas in our body parts are considered with, with four types of Rupas accordingly. However, among them, Uttudhi Rupas are the most prominent in Gabbasiyaka beings, ones who are born from a womb. Uh, in the uh, Opapatikas, yeah, Sansejas also in the end, obviously Utuja is much prominent. Uh, Opapatikas uh, is lesser, Utuja is quite lesser compared to us, compared to us. Nevertheless, according to the Buddha's teachings, past karma greatly affects the nature, appearance and ability of these Rupas. They greatly appearance, everything changes based on, based on karma. So we have a lot of doctrinal evidences to show this. Buddha was of this opinion. So what does it mean? Any rupa that is not directly produced by karma, but affected by karma, which has a certain rela relationship with karma, which sustain, of which the generation sustains as long as the karma remains. These are called karma pachya, the entire body called karma pachya. So can we include karma rupas into it? Yeah, it's, it's, I'm unable to give you an exact answer for this because the entire body, limbs and all were called Kamapacha. In these limbs, we have Kamaj Rupas as well. So it's not an issue that we can put Kamaj Rupas into this name as well. Seems like. But the thing is, these Kamapacha Rupas of four other types of Rupas are greatly affected by this karma. In the Lakkana Sutta, because in the Lakkana Sutta, Buddha said he possessed 32 uh, signs of a great man, Mahapurisa Lakkana. In Lakkana Sutta, he mentions what, were the, what was the karma which caused each and each great signs of a, uh, signs of a great man. Because he paid respect to the elders, because he did, gave dana. So these signs, he ob obtained these signs. In the Lakkana Sutta, he specifically mentioned why he could get all this, uh, this attractive body because of this, this deed that he had done in Sansara. So what does this mean? His body has been affected by the past karma. Not in a negative sense, but in positive sense. Right? So that's why it's a Lakkana Sutta of Diga Nikaya. The Buddha mentioned that past wholesome kammas to these second types of, uh, sorry, uh, the Buddha mentioned the past wholesome kammas were the reasons for his 32 signs of a great man, Mahapurisa Lakkana. Then, uh, in the Chula Kamma Vibhanga Sutta, we find, Kama, Chula Kama Vibhanga. Uh, when he explained this uh, phenomenon to the clansman Subha, uh, the Kama is the reason for pleasant and unpleasant appearance of humans. If someone yields anger too much, he tends to become unpleasant, uh, ugly, not attractive. If someone practices loving kindness, then he tends to be very attractive. So likewise, uh, according to Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutra also, the appearance, the body appearance, the Kama Pachya, the limbs and everything changes uh, uh, based on the karma, right? Then, so we can find Lakkana Sutta as references. Lakkana Sutta, then we have Nidhikanda, uh, sorry, Chula Kama, Chula Kama. 
विभंग सुत्त चूलकम विभंग सुत्त टेंशन नाद सुत्त निधि खंड सुत्त विच इज वर्दि एनलाइजिंग निधि खंड सुत्त इन कुदक निकाय निधि खंड सुत्त इन कुदक निकाय इन द निधि खंड सुत्त बुद्ध मेन्शन वन कैन ऑब्टेन द फॉलोइंग प्लसेंट फिजिकल ट्रेट्स ड्यू टू मेरिट्स डन इन पास्ट वट आर दिस सुवर्णता सुसरता सुसंटान सरूपता आदिपच्च परिवारो सभ में ते न लभति अ फाइन कंप्लेक्शन स्किन कलर स्वीट वॉइस अ बॉडी वेल बिल्ट वेल फॉर्म्ड वेल बिल्ट एंड वेल फॉर्म्ड विदाउट डिफेक्ट्स लॉर्डशिप अ ग्रेट फॉलोइंग रेटिन्यू ऑल दैट इज गेन बाय दिस बाय दिस मींस मेरिट सब में ते न लभति बाय दिस this means merit punya we call so what are these we we are going to analyze few terms suvarnata the beautiful attractive complexion susarata sweet voice susanthana sarupata well formed well built body adipachya parivaro it's a different thing right this is not related to rupa actually so then these how do we explain because punya the merit it says the merit is producing these things now regarding the kamapachya even what we have to understand is most amount of rupas found here in the body are utuja rupas if the person had very beautiful features like shape of the face nose or the limbs some are very attractive that's why we even choose beauty queens in the world right because it, it's, it's there are some attractive features of the humans some are of the opinion that this is just uh, based on the uh, person's preference but according to the teaching it seems like uh, buddha was of the opinion that uh, the objects themselves contain sort of a beauty or ugliness the pleasant unpleasant nature was inbuilt is inbuilt It's, it's within the object that's we call pleasant objects unpleasant objects right uh so then uh this appearance you know, think about the great man signs which were very attractive according to the literature what happens is when this body is produced by utuja rupas or chitta rupas or aharaj rupas when the buddha's body is sustaining due to various reasons but the kama does it kama shapes when the utuja rupa is arising accumulating in the body due to the food he ate the kama makes it to be of a very attractive appearance so that's what the how karma is functioning rupa is produced by utu tejo datu but when this tejo datu is producing rupa the karma is affecting and it instead of forming like this it may have formed like this for example the karma gives a good shape to the rupa so that's the same thing which is happening in the phenomenon explaining the nidhi kanda sutta so we shall analyze for some of these uh terms suvarnata Suvarnata is the color. Suvarnata, the golden color. The Buddha was of the golden skin. That's why even money was gold was named Jata Rupa according to the Theravada explanations, right? So uh, beautiful skin color, attractive skin color, golden color. So what does it mean? The color we see in someone's body is mostly Utuja Rupas. And according to the Masamgani commentary, not not only Utuja Rupas, but all four the color of all four types of Rupa are sensitive to the eye. But the majority is Utuja. That's why still after someone is dead, we can still see the person, right? His color. Color doesn't change much immediately after death, right? It has to change after some time. So, 
what does it mean the sutra says colorfulness or beautiful color golden color is obtained due to karma is obtained due to karma but we know the majority of the color rupas are produced by utu are produced by utu so when a kalapa think about few kalapas produced by utu that is been affected by karma either it's affecting utu or uh, the rupa i am unable to say exactly what it is affecting we just assume that it is affecting the rupa for example so what happens is due to the effect of the karma this rupa started to have a maybe it's if we go more detail the proportion of the come uh, four elements are affected by karma so instead of getting a different color or maybe because of his genes think about buddha he would have been still golden appearance due to the genes that he had from his parents but it's not only his parents appearance decided his beauty but also his past karma so what happens he had golden color but it was something special special than any person in their clan special than nanda or rahula or even than suddhodana so in his clan most of them would have been that same color right except in some exceptional cases we we know that that's how the genes work but buddha the bodhisattva would have been someone special than others so in in we can call in the uh, scientific it's a mutation mutation means sort of a random thing has happened but in buddhist context we say instead of mutation in random so when the genes are gathering in his body which of his own clan why he became exceptional that is because his past merits punya or kusala affected his utu jarupas when they have been produced by utu for whatever reason i'm not able to explain what was the mechanism behind it we may go into detail and say it affected the great mahabhutas or effect affected the utu whatever somehow due to the influence of the karma the utu jar rupas which happened their generation and their uh, santana group sarira body appeared to be different from the other members of the clan so if this this since this person if we call buddha him as b while his parents were a now others were c if the b had accumulated more merits than a and c while they are in the same genetical pool in the clan's pool genetic pool would have have surely slight differences are there why such a different special difference was obtained by him while not others is due to the karma is due to the karma but still i'm not proving it because the randomness is obviously there so that's why we put it as random mutation in science it could have been a random occurrence a random incidence but in buddhism since we accept the idea of a karma karma without karma there cannot be a consciousness according to us according to teachings so when it is been when it is producing a life that karma is affecting not only the mind but also the body but also the body so as a result the karma uh, utuja rupa so other types of rupas chitta rupas aahara rupas and even karma rupas produced by this i affecting so another thing is now it can be buddha's karma rupas may have been produced now think about his fingers for instance for example if you think about his fingers it's not out of res- disrespect for example if i if i just want to uh, indicate right so if these were the for example fingers of the buddha if these are fingers for instance now they contain all four types of rupa kamma 
ಚಿತ್ತ ಉತ್ತು ಆಹಾರ ಆಲ್ ಫೋರ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಅದೇ ಮೇ ಬಿ ದ ಕಮಜ್ ರೂಪಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಫಿಂಗರ್ ಇದ ಬಾವ ರೂಪಾಸ್ ಓ ಕಾಯ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಓ ಜೀವಿತ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೆನಿ ಐನಿ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹದೆಯ ಇನ್ ಫಿಂಗರ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಚಕ್ಕು ಸೋತ ರೈಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಮಜ ಕಲಾಪಾಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿಮಮ್ ಲಿ ಆರ್ ಫೌಂಡ್ ದೇ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಕಮಜ ಕಲಾಪಾಸ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಮೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಬೈ ಸಮ್ ಅದರ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಬಟ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಫಿಂಗರ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ನೈಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ಡ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ very attractive they were like like a certain window when 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 he uh, uh, bring his arm uh, fingers together unlike us unlike of ours unlike ours so that can be a different karma which he performed in sansara it's not necessary to be the karma which gave which produced the kamaj rupas in the finger now think if this was kamaj rupas of the finger were of a karma different karma karma number 1 but his beauty of the fingers were caused by karma number 2 so it's still the same phenomenon is happening his kamaj rupas are produced by a certain karma karma 1 and it is affected by karma 2 so then they became nicer so the entire body entire fingers for example are affected by a certain karma okay because of karma his fingers appear to be of that nature now think according to lakkana sutta each and every body mark was obtained by different different karma so it means at least at least 32 karmas were affecting in his on his body at the same time that's why he got 32 great marks of a great being so he said i obtained this mark because of this karma this mark this is a big this karma and if you think surely 232 karmas are affecting his body right so likewise what the karma is doing is changing the rupa produced by some other cause it can be another karma or it can be utu ai chitta or ahara so that's the change of the color susaratha for example susaratha so swarnata we see all the four types of rupa but this so it means what we see in someone's body the color is produced by all four types of causes but the karma has made it very attractive now think about susarata susarata is the voice sweetness of the voice sweet voice some people have very sweet voice right some are very rough not very nice to hear hmm? Uh, so sweet voice buddha's voice had eight qualities we call uh, we call it uh, eight eight factors of the buddha's voice or eight, eight factors of the brahma's voice actually visatta manju vinyaya savaniya cha visarino bindu gambhira ninnadi save attang attangika sara or something like that so there were eight factors eight qualities of the buddha's voice which are very attractive that's why even animals used to listen to his voice sweet voice voice is mainly according to abhidhamma is chitta ja is produced by chitta we shall discuss this in the future lectures chitta ja why is that we we art articulate our voice based on our desire when i want to say desire if i happen to say go for example if i happen to di- pronounce a different noun when i want to say desire if i if my body is pronouncing uh, some other word misery for example so it means it's out of my control it's out of my control but we know that in most of the cases we articulate the sounds that we want according to our intention so sound is produced by chitta according to the teachings and one while we are producing the sound we cannot deny the fact that some utuja sounds are also produced when the tongue and the parts of the mouth are touching each other 
surely the utuja rupas are occurring the sound was made in a according to our desire because of vinyati involving there so the mind is surely involved in our pronunciation otherwise we would not be able to pronounce as we want hmm? so one can bring the argument can't this be done with the bodily intimation we shall discuss about this in the chittaja chapter chittaja rupas starting from next week most probably if we happen to finish this today hmm? so normally we say the sound the proper sound was uttered as we indicated as we intended because of the influence of chitta so it's a chitta jati sometimes utuja rupas are occur also happening obviously when we are pronouncing sounds but according to the sutra sweet voice is a production of good karma how can we doesn't this does this looks like a bit contradicting so what has happened is the theravadins will explain are explaining is this in way in this way because they would never violate abhidhamma fundamental because of a, a sutra that's normally that's how they they don't do that right so and also it it cannot be that the, we are pronouncing our sounds because of karma because surely our intention is there obviously right if sound is a production of past karma we should be able to pronounce certain sounds that we are not aware of think about akusala karma uh, giving results and produces certain sound how would that would that be and what kind of sort of word that would have uttered suddenly i'm giving a lecture and akusala karma coming forth and giving a sound this would be a chaos i'll be speaking something something unrelated right so therefore it seems like the chit involvement of chitta is very obvious here therefore there was in the opinion or of the opinion that good voice is not a direct production of karma then why the buddha mentioned that sweet voice is a product of karma result of karma what is what it happens is the karma is affecting the rupas where the sound is articulated it's affecting so what happens the vocal cords the throat the structure of the teeth the nature of the tongue all are affected by this karma as it happened in the first case we are talking about this kama pachaya the kama is affecting this body as we explain for the suswanata when rupa are produced by different causes kama is affecting this affecting this so a person who has done a karma to obtain good voice what happens is karma when his vocal cords the throat the uh, the vocal area is produced by maybe due to karma uh, due to kar uh, other karma or utu or chitta or ahara mainly utu jarupas this karma effects mysteriously and makes it to then the, then what happens the structure happens in a way which facilitates a sweet voice what the karma does it does is it facilitates for the rupa to have a structure which can produce a sweet voice whenever we talk using our mind so that is how susarata is obtained then at the same time that same karma then we have to think about the obstructs obstacles for sweet voice it's not only the structure of the vocal area some other obstacles may may obstruct it for example having a good eye but still there can be a catheter or uh, and obstruct the view so likewise there are certain obstacles for the sweet voice so kama removes them kama doesn't let sort of phlegm and all these to occupy these areas even the structure is nice if there are certain hindrances physical hindrances sickness occurring think about a cancer or some other a lump is coming in the on the on the throat you not be have will be able to pronounce properly hmm? have a nice sweet voice so this good karma prevents it prevents the burdens or prevents the obstructions for the sweet voice it structures the body in a way to way facilitating a sweet voice and also it removes the obstacles so when structuring we call upatthambana 
Upatthambana is the supporting. Anupalana. Anupalana is protecting it by removing the uh, obstacles. Susarata. So that's how Susarata is obtained. So likewise, uh, then uh, Susantana Sarupata, well built, it's easy to understand. So the body structure, when it is been built, the Kama affects it and it appears in a nicer structure which appeals others. So I shall read these two paragraphs. Out of the above attractive, attractive physical attributes, the fine complexion, suvannata, well-built structure, susantanata and well-formedness of the body is mainly found in Utujarupas, mainly in Utujarupas. These matters are mainly constituted with the rupas which entered the body from the bodies of mother and father and uh, matter accumulated through eating food. In the Utujarupa chapter, I will be explaining there are main few ways the Utujarupa is accumulated. The, the most, uh, most uh, accumulation happens through food. Hmm? But some rupa we got from our parents as well. What the merits do is they cause the Utujarupas to become attractive. It should be imperatively emphasized that pleasant Utujarupas are not produced by wholesome deeds. Merits only become a cause for them to be pleasant. That is very important to know. Then regarding Sussarata. Sussarata. The voice of a being is mainly produced by mind. Hence the most portion of sound when speaking is considered with, constituted with Utujarupas. The other part being, uh, sorry, Chittajarupas. Constituted with Chittajarupas. The other part being Utujarupas. However, according to the Sutta, good deeds done in the past can cause a sweet voice. Is this information not contradicting? As mentioned above, what the wholesome deeds do is, they cause rupas that form the throat, vocal cords and parts of the mouth to be in a manner that support the sweet voice. Moreover, good deeds keep the vocal areas, so that is called upattambana in our tradition. Upattambana, it helps the body to be in a certain way that facilitates sweet voice or attractiveness, all these, upattamana. Moreover, good deeds keep the vocal area healthy and free from obstacles to sweet voice, such as phlegm and so on. This is called anupalana. Upattambana and anupalana, two functions of the karma. Due to these conditions, uh, due to these conditions actually, sorry, conditions, thus happen to arrange by the power of past good deeds, the voice of the being becomes sweet to listen. It should not be misunderstood that sweet sound is a direct production of karma. It is not a kamaj rupa according to Theravada teachings. Then, we have another important aspect. Living long. The body happens to live long for a period. According to Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutra. Chula Kama Vibhanga. Right? Living long. Yeah, we'll come to the next one. Live long. Long life. Long life. Long life has to be explained in two ways. The mind process is continuing due to the strength of the karma. And the next way is body is healthy, so it can sustain. So when we talk about life in the karma realm, we have to talk about few aspects. The mind is, the bhavanga process is continuing due to past karma. It's not that the mind gets sick and die. No, it doesn't normally happen like that. Or other way, the body is healthier, so it can sustain. The body is weaker, even the karma is still there, the person dies. That's what happened to Buddha, sorry. They have a karma to live for a longer period, but their bodies cannot sustain for a longer period, such period. Now, Buddha mentioned, now this, this, some other fundamentals are also involved in, the, in this explanation. Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta, Buddha mentioned abstaining from Killing. Abstaining from killing causes long life. Gives a long life to Subha. So what does this mean? What does this mean? This is how the commentators explain this. Now, when abstaining from, now think about the past life. The person abstains. Now this is the sila. Abstain 
from killing. This abstaining, due to this abstaining, now think if he happens to live without breaking the sila. What happens is this abstaining of sila causes now his mind is not occupied by killing or dosa, strong anger. Dosa is there, but not strong, strong anger. This causes a certain effect into the mind stream. Certain effect, a certain change occurs. This change, we find in subcommentary literature when doing a karma even. When someone is performing a karma, a certain change happens in the mind stream. Anutika explains this happening is the karma lays down a certain special uh, force which we call karma force in our books in the mind stream. So what happens is the entire process is affected by this. More good karmas we do, more effects are happening. So what happens is now this due to this change effect it's affecting the entire mind stream. Now, this green color indicates he is a person who has abstained from killing. Though it is a one mind moment determination or a one mind moment or one process or few uh, short period determination, as long as we abstain from this bad act, if as long as we keep this precept, we don't break the precept. We adhere to this virtue. Our mind process is different. Then it's not different in the sense of understanding or anything, but it has a different, it's different than before. The time he used to kill animals. So what happens is, now think, he does a karma here. He does a dana. No, we better draw it differently. Now, if this is the dana. If he does a dana, in this mind moment, dana, it leaves the kama force, for example, kama. This karma, even though it's a small dana, think about giving to a, someone or animal or something, which is not a very high dana according to literature. This dana, if give results in the next life, if it gives the rebirth, for example, it may cause to have a not that much glorious life, like karma that offered to a Buddha or Pacheka Buddha or a great being because the accumulation is not that powerful. The strength of the karma is not powerful due to the lack of qualities of the animal. So now, this karma is giving results. So it's not a very strong karma. Think that it was done not with very attention. So it's a, it's a, it's a normal karma. It's an ordinary birth is given. But this birth, newly attained birth, would last for a longer period. Longer period. Though the karma is small, its capacity is lesser, it won't take us to a very higher realm. Whatever the realm he's born into, he'll be able to live the entire life. Why was that? His karma occurred in a mind stream affected by a good virtue. Good virtue. That is why we normally say, if someone does dana, being virtuous, his karma is more powerful. The virtue changes the mind stream. It changes the mind stream. So these changes are not paramatta dhammas or chitta cheta sikas. That's why we had a separate category. We call ekache pache sati, we call paramatta jatikas. These are found in the literature. That's how the commentators explain the process. A change occurs. Now think, 
The same process happens. One is virtuous. It changes the mind. That mind process, because a certain effect is laid down. So this effect is affecting the, that, that force which was laid down, affecting the minds coming, arising minds. So what happens is, if it is an effect caused by sila, as long as we don't break it, it is there. This mind stream facilitates samadhi. That is why we say, in order to develop samadhi, you should have sila. Samadhi, strong samadhi doesn't arise in a mind stream not affected by sila. I'm not talking about rupa here, I'm talking about a very different fundamental, right? Now, if this, think about a mind stream, think about a mind stream which was not restrained by killing. For example, if his dana was given here, if his dana was given here, because it is not affected by sila yet. So it is the mind stream is in a low quality. Think about the dana, a glorious dana. He gave food. He is a hunter. He is not abstained from killing. But he offered very happily dana to a Buddha. It's a glorious karma. Which would surely bring a glorious life. But it would terminate very quickly. It doesn't have the capacity to make it long. That is how the commentators explain the Subha Sutra. So Buddha mentioned, abstaining from killing causes long life. It is not that. It is, if that sila gives rebirth, yes, obviously it would make it long. Think about he is born with a dana. How this sila is causing him to live long? Because the fundamental is the length of the life is mainly determined by the kamma which gave the patisandhi. A different kamma cannot lengthen our patisandhi karma. If it was a karma that give, can give, live for 40 years, think about another karma coming and strengthening it to be 50. No, it cannot happen according to Theravada fundamental. It's a violation of fundamentals. So then how these Buddha's teachings are explained? It is the karma that lives us, makes us to live. But that karma, though it's weak, it's aspect of length. So one karma has various aspects. A healthiness, giving a healthy body, facilitating a healthy body, living long, facilitating a beautiful appearance. So we can have the Patisandhi Kamma is effect, uh, there are various aspects of this karma. Now think about the life aspect, the length of the, length of the life aspect. If it arises in a mind stream where Sila abstaining from killing has happened, a mind stream which abstains from killing because of a certain determination, the karma which occurred there, which happens there, that capacity length is higher. So that karma from the beginning has the capacity to live long the entire human life or deva life. Right? This is how this explanation is given in the Theravada doctrine. Now think about, now we are coming back to the rupa. Think someone is living long. So what does it mean? His karma is capable of making him to live long, but the karma alone cannot make us to live. The body also should suit this length. The body has to sustain. So what happens? It shows that, it implicitly says, mentions, indicates that if someone is a karma born and he's going to live long, that karma, the body produced by that karma has to be healthy, right? Otherwise he not live long. If it is prone to cancer, if it is prone to some other disease, if the immune system is weaker, 
surely it will, he will die soon. There is high possibility that he may die. So this karma which was done in a mind stream which abstained from killing produces a body which is healthy, which has a high immune. So this body, the entire body is not made by Kamaja Rupas. Those Utuja Rupas, other Rupas are also affected by this. And then think about, it is not this karma which directly produce, it is the karma which is produced, but actually the sila is the reason for this karma. Buddha never said dana, because of dana he became live, he lived long. Because of sila, but he was born with a dana. So sila affects the dana and the body obtained by dana can live long. I'll repeat again. Sila affects the dana, affects the dana. The body obtained, gained through dana can live long. So how? The karma is affecting the body. It's a different effect. It's a different effect. It's like, it's not that it is affecting in this way. Hmm? We can say some sort of effect is there, but it's a fundamentally the original cause has been affected by a karma. Because in some cases, one has done a great merit in the past, past lives. Because of that karma, I am, my other karmas that I did in this life, because this has to be applied in the same life, it seems like. This is how I understand. A dana becomes powerful to give a long life only when that sila is being practiced in that life. Think about a person who has been living virtuous in the past life, but now he is a killer. His dana arises in a mind stream where he has not abstained. This sila, I don't think this sila would make this dana stronger to live long. Because it occurred in a mind stream where abstaining has not happened. But think about a body part becoming attractive due to a karma done in the past sansara. So the karma is affecting this. So this effect is quite different. That's why I made it a different uh, segment. Right? So I'll read and finish the lecture today. In the Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta, the Buddha mentioned that beings who restrain from killing happen to live long when born as humans. In such cases, when someone restrains from killing by observing, observe, by observing virtue, right? Observing virtue, it makes a positive change in the mind stream. Even a small good deed done in such mind stream, if happens to give a rebirth, has the capacity to produce a long life. Thus the body in a life produced by karma strengthened by sila becomes healthy. All four types of generations of matter last long without getting sick. The immunity of such rupas is higher. This is the support given by sila to the newly obtained life upatambana. Moreover, it facilitates, uh, sila facilitates its long, longevity, its longevity, anupalana. By avoiding disturbances to the life by bringing necessary money and requisites also. It is wrong to hold that the entire body of a man with a long lifespan is directly created by karma. If you go into, if we, if we try to define the Subha Sutra or the Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta saying that the body is produced by Sila, no. This is how the mechanism is explained in the Theravada teachings. Because keeping in line with the fundamentals, right? So today we talked not much, but I hope it was a uh, uh, it gave some insights to you. I was not able to finish the entire topic. Next day, we will uh, uh, talk about the other aspects of the uh, life rupas related to karma. So today we discussed, to conclude, we just gave a brief summary uh, what uh, rupas, kalapas and all these, we reminded it. And then we are talking about chitta dautoja aharaja kalap rupas affected by karma or Kamaj Rupas affected by a different karma. Then Kama Pachya, that was the first chapter. So Kama Pachya is the mainly the all body parts of living beings, limbs. They are affected by karma. Then in the Nidika, because in the Lakkana Sutta, Buddha explained that he got the great signs of a great man, signs of a great man due to this uh, 
past merits and Buddha also explained people become attractive and interactive due to the past karmas. Hmm. So the body is not only Kamaj Rupas, Kamma is effect in this. Now think about the susarata, uh, susan, uh, Suvannatha, the uh, complexion and Susanthana Sarupata, well formness of the body, the Kamma is affecting these Rupas. Susarata, the sweet voice is obtained also due to the effects of the karma to the rupa uh, of the uh, vocal area. Then, according to Subha Sutta, when someone is living long, his body has to be healthy. So this is how we explain the process. When someone abstains from killing, the entire mind stream changes and this, uh, even a small dana kamma that is done in this mind stream has the capacity to give a long life. This, so what happens is, sila is affecting the dana and that dana Sila is affecting the dana and that dana produces a long life. So it's also a linear uh, relationship is there. So next week I'm going to talk about linear connection of karma. Kamma pachya utuja. Kamma pachya aharajan so forth. So uh, that will be the lecture. So what does this show? Our nama rupa is being affected by various karmas. It also shows us the non-self doctrine that it is not someone obtain all these uh, because of the forces that we accumulated in the past by doing good and bad deeds affecting our new Nama and Rupa. Okay, I hope uh, it was it gave you some insights. So I open the forum to for the Q&A session. Yeah. So the question is how to explain a person who lives a long life but is very sick. Uh, and how to Mm. So, uh, someone is living long, but he's very sick, is it? Yeah, he's very sick, he's taking medicine, he's a doctor, going to hospital. So, how do you explain that? So, there are a few ways, when the question was asked, there are a few ways that I'll be able to explain this. Uh, getting sick is being healthy, like uh, less sick, is mainly caused by not harming others not harming others. Abstaining from killing is cause, causes long, longevity of the life, longevity. He may live long. If I, if I directly go into the sutra and I try to explain, uh, someone who has abstained from killing in sansara lives long, but if he or she has done harm to others, not killing but harming, hitting or physically torturing, that can make him or her to be sick. Though still he lives long due to abstaining from killing, but due to harming others, he may, he may, he or may, he may, he or she may be sick. Then another explanation: sometimes there are certain sicknesses. Now, no, it's not just normal, ordinary sickness. Some sicknesses are there. Even when we see, we feel it's better that this person dies. Sometimes we have such feelings. It's it's like his life is. Living his life is just suffering. Nothing is going to gain. But still it's better than Peta world or anything because he's still living a human life. Uh, in such cases, we may assume that a past Akusala Kamma uh, makes the person to live long. That normally happens in some, pet, some Asuras, it says in books. So they are suffering. They are born in good realms, but still it's not a very pleasurable realm. Asuras and all, uh, Vemanika Asuras, Vinipatika Asuras, Vinipatika Asuras especially. So, their Akusala Kamas doesn't let them to die. So, they may live for a longer period, uh, supported by Akusala. That is also one reason, but that should be, to my understanding, uh, something that the sickness is very serious, that even a, a third party would feel like it's better this, this, this person dies, and why is not dying? Why is just... Uh, the suffering is lengthening, it's lingering. So we may, f so that is also another possibility. But the easiest possibility, if we talk about the karma, uh, if things like the, the sickness is due to karmas and effects of karma, uh, abstaining from killing makes the person to live long, abstaining from harming others makes the person to be healthy. So here what I, what I talked about healthiness is, there should be some basic healthiness to help for someone to live. 
So that's obviously if the karma is uh, uh, abstaining from killing causes for us to live long, it means he got some basic healthy body, otherwise it would die. So, but still if it's affected by sickness time to time, for she's, he or she is affected, that can be a reason that he or she has done uh, harm to others, physical torturing in samsara. Uh, Okay. So, uh, so we know that the uh, the is the result of the uh, Okay. So the Uh, okay, so you are talking about, uh, I'll, I'll directly go to the, yeah, I'm opening now, I'm opening, yeah. So yeah. this is uh, Pati Saupada, yeah, okay. Uh, which, Vinyana Pachya Nama Rupa, right? Yes. Vinyana Pachya Nama Rupa, okay. Uh, 195, okay. 194, 195. Abhisankar vinyanang pana asanya satta rupasa va panchavokara bhave va kammaja rupasa suttantika pariyaya to upanise vasena ekadha pachyo hoti. Avasesa. Okay. So this is abhi, not karma, Dr. Ryan. This is abhisankara vinyana, not chetana. That's why they bring upanise. If it is abhisankara chetana, then kamma pachya. Because of abhisankara vinyana. Vijnana is not karma, right? So that's that's the reason. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you want to give any more questions. Please feel free. Question to check out. This is another question. How to explain a person who is very afraid and very anxious? Very afraid and very anxious. Uh, that is mainly, I think, his mental capacity, right? So he lives long, he, he, he got a life, but his mind set up doesn't like he is not able to, he or she is not able to cope with some other things. Maybe she is or she is very anxious about the future, anxiety is there, depression can be there. So these I feel mainly due to mental effects. Then we also need to think about uh, the character how it has been explained in the Theravada teachings. The character of a person. Character of a person called Charita. Can we, can, we may have few reasons for a Charita. Charita. First is the Kamma which gave the rebirth. Kamma the rebirth karma, not all karma, rebirth karma. When the rebirth karma was accumulated, of this is the karma, for example, effects of lobha, dosa, and moha. This is not explained for the, to the uh, akusala patisandhis, mainly for the kusala. Hmm? For the akusala, we, then we have to, because lobha, dosa, moha, we do the karma with lobha, dosa, moha. It's not affecting, right? So then 
it has to be a different approach. Now, person who is born with a kusala kamma, new life, and his bhavanga is continuing, patisandhi, bhavanga, and then in between, javanas arise. Right? Javanas are greatly affected by the bhavanga. That's why we normally say a somanasa bhavanga person gets somanasa javanas frequent than upekka bhavanga person. Person who has a tihetuka bhavanga gets wisdom more than a person who has a dihetuka bhavanga. The bhavanga greatly affects our mind stream. Now, if the karma, now think about a good karma he did, he or she did, dana karma. If, because the nature of the karma determines mostly the, the jnana sampayutta nature, according to this doctrine, this doctrine of karma vipaka, uh, mainly about the understanding of karma, uh, mainly because of the understanding of the phenomenon of karma. But that's the not, that's not, if someone understands karma gives results, we call it jnana sampayutta. But that's not the only reason to be called jnana sampayutta vipayutta. If you only adhere to this notion that vijnana becomes or consciousness becomes jnana sampayutta due to the understanding of the doctrine of karma, then there cannot be jnana vipayutta mahakirya, right? Because jnana vipayutta mahakirya appears, appears into arahant who always believes or understands the function of phenomenon of karma and vipaka. So if jnana vipayutta kirya appears to arahant, it means understanding of karma and vipaka is not the reason, not the only reason for a consciousness to become jnana sampayutta or vipayutta. No. But in the doctrine of karma, giving rebirth, we normally say a con consciousness is considered tihetuka only when it has understanding about karma and vipaka. Right? So, now, someone may have done a good karma, tihetuka karma or a good dana, but in the surrounding period, his loba was not greatly subdued think that he was he was having some sensual pleasures and suddenly he comes up and it was not fully sub subdued means his mind is not fully detached from them, not far away from that and he's giving a dana so his loba is somehow affecting his his kusala he's affecting his kusala then what happened now think his dosa was greatly subdued moha was greatly subdued but not loba this patisandhi facilitates a bhavanga process which is prone to loba very easily. But dosa and moha are lesser in him. So we find a character who is very kind, very intelligent, but gets attached. Loba is there. Maybe lust is stronger. Maybe he, get, he or she gets attached to certain things very, very strongly. Now if, now you can find out the rhythm like for example, another example, Loba was subdued, but he was very angry with someone, a coral fight, and suddenly he gives a dana, but his mind was not completely pure. He, he focused on the dana and gave the dana, but Doza was not fully subdued. Moha was subdued, for example. Now what happens? If this karma gives a patisandhi, he'll be of a person who is very much detached, intelligent, but hot-tempered. This is how the Dhamma Sanghani commentary explains about Charita, one approach of explaining Charita. That is the reason, now this is one reason why how we can explain Bodhisattva in certain lives, a person who could give his eyes, so a person who could give his entire life to others, who could even give, give his children. In one life he was a burglar. One who gave even his body pass to others was taking others stuff forcefully. How could this happen? Such a person, great person who has been practicing all throughout the sansara, giving, giving, because they were the, the, the biggest merit, the, the, the kusala he did was dana. The most was dana was the, was the main, main act that he was doing, bodhisattva. So, but in one life he was a burglar. So, the commentators say two reasons. One is effects of the nature, the nakatta, the stars, which I'm not going to talk, like, because uh, then it will open a different debate. Wa, it says, oh, either, in another way, the weakness of the patisandhi karma. 
weakness of the Patisandika. What was that? It is not that he was born with the Omaka Kamma. According to the story, if I remember, he, he ended up getting Janas or something. The weakness was, his Kamma was affected by Dosa or Loba, whatever. So he was an intelligent person, but still prone to some defilements. So he was not born as a bird. Very easily, very easily, because of some association, he was taken into that level, that side. But in some lives, even his parents were not, not very uh, uh, having a good life. But he may divert away and go to the correct path. So this is called Usada Kittana in, in Dhamma Sangini commentary. Usada Kittana. Then the second way to explain is Upanisaya. Past life accumulations. Now think about. Now think. Bodhisattva has been given dana throughout the entire sansara. So naturally he tends to be a charitable person. He used to practice metta throughout the sansara. So he's a very kind person by nature. Obviously, it comes, it is naturally occurring in him. Why is that? Because of his abandoned call it past uh, qualities, Upanisaya. This can be for isolated reasons as well. Sometimes, some people may get attached to a particular person because of associating him or her for a longer period in sansar. So this Upanisaya is, can make us to have regular thoughts regarding some uh, good or bad deeds at the same time to specific objects to specific objects so Panisaya can also be a character now think about someone who has died from a tragedy tra tra tragedy like uh, falling from height this is not to generalize this there is a high possibility that if he greatly Dread, uh, afraid of such heights, there is a possibility that he may have such an experience in sansara. So unconsciously, it's affecting him. Upanisya. Then the fourth is, third is, the charita itself as a paramatta jatika. Paramatta jatika charita. Paramatta jatika charita. Asaya, anusaya, charita, adimuti. This charita has two definitions. The most common definition in commentaries is the past karma. Karma that has been accumulated. In sub-commentaries we find charita as behavioral attributes. Possibilities there is given. It's like asaya. When we have done, when we have developed a certain quality for a long period, like bodhisattva, giving dana and so forth, it becomes his nature. It becomes his nature. So we call it, sometimes we call it asaya. Not anusaya, asaya. Adimutti, inclined, inclined, inclination. His mind, abod is asaya. His mind is always in that quality. Asaya, charita. Charita is, he, it becomes his character. The same quality, asaya, manifest adimutti qualities and charita qualities. The second definition of charita. So it becomes something in his mind stream, like anusaya. So bodhisattvas, due to practicing a long for a long period, good qualities, by nature they possess this asaya. As someone who has practiced bad qualities for a long period, they get a bad asaya. So when, when the Buddha is observing others, he checks whether this person has good or bad qualities then whether he is capable of attaining or not attaining. Right? So these three are mainly found for, for, to, to, for someone to have these character traits. Character traits. So I'm not saying that the anxiety or everything is mainly due to this. It can be a upanisya of the past lives or some habit that the person has developed in this life. It can be due to wrong understandings, wrong contemplations. 
or it can be a reason that he has been, he or she has been anxious throughout the sansara, this quality has been developed and it became an inherited quality in his or her. Or it can be that the Patisandhi Kamma was quite weak. We all have these defects. We know that we all have some, some defilements within us. And it can be the weakness. So anything is possible. At the same time, even there's, if there is no connection in the past life, it can be a quality that we develop within this very life because of our unwise attention or bad association or some other reason. So longevity of life is a different thing. The mental aspects of dealing with the world or life is a different thing. So this is are the, these are the reasons that we find mainly. And also when we come into the doctrine of karma, it says that sometimes in some lives, karma can directly affect the mind stream. We can bring it at the fourth aspect, but it is not a character trait. It can be a character trait if it is very strong, like what happened to Chulla Pantaka. He couldn't memorize one verse for four months, four or three months, right? Because of the karma, you know the story, he, he being a teacher in the Kasava Buddha's life, he accused or he mocked a certain student who couldn't study and he stopped studying. So this karma uh, made him not to, he caused the inability for him to memorize uh, one gatha, a person who was destined to become one of the great disciples of the Buddha. And the Bodhisattva himself suffered with this once. When he was practicing to become a Buddha, he couldn't find the correct path for six years. So he himself said in the Apadana Pali that his accusation, insult he made to Kasapa Buddha made him to search in the wrong way for six years. Kumma gena gavesis For six years in the wrong path. So likewise, sometimes karma can affect the someone's life but it seems like not as a character trait in isolated incidences. But if, it, if sometimes some karmas can cause the entire, effect, the entire life, possibility is there. Possibility is there. So these are, this is how I would answer that question. <laughs> okay, then we'll make it the final then. Okay. Close in, wealthy, wealthy but stingy. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I'm not be able to explain all these uh, psychological things uh, based on the doctrine. Uh, that can be, yeah, he's so she is being not very generous in sansara. That can be open. We can we can understand it can be open effect, or maybe he's uh, he has done a great merit of offering a dana to someone but at the same time he has developed some attachment and and he has greatly wish like that life so that's why we normally say when we give dana you can wish for wealth but always be safe with that wish like may i get the wealth with this but at the same time may i be a generous person so i can accumulate a lot of merits by uh, getting the wealth in sansara that's how bodhisattvas wish because bodhisattvas need money so otherwise they cannot give dana, right? But then they wish, may I not get attached to this? So that is a good, good uh, way to think. Because there was now, even merit can be some, bring some disastrous effects. There was a lady called Swarnatilaka. She offered flowers, if I remember to Buddha or a Savaka. And when he wished, she wished, may I get an appearance that any male who sees me goes mad. So such a beautiful blonde <laughs> woman, right? Very attractive. Then, yeah, she got that beautiful figure. So what I'm, but unfortunately she was born into a, a very uh, uh, low clan. So clan system was very strong in Sri Lanka. Uh, then, uh, I think it's Sri Lanka, it's Sri Lanka, if I remember. Uh, so the high clan people could not marry her because it's the social norms are very strict. Uh, then uh, three princesses, three or four princesses uh, got, uh, fell in love with her 
uh, with sight, but they didn't have the opportunity to marry her. If they marry her, then they would lose their king, they would not get their luxury, they'll be expelled from the clan. So it's a huge decision. So they couldn't take that decision and their family is obstructed and they knew that it's not possible and they couldn't live without her and they committed suicide, four princes. Then one of the teachers, grown up, grown up well uh, known teacher of the society, she, he fell in love, in, with, in love with her and he also knew the, uh, knew the consequences and without being able to bear the suffering, he himself suicided. Then the students got to know this. This lady is a, uh, uh, like a danger for the society. Four princes have committed suicide and our teacher committed suicide. It's better this lady doesn't exist. So they gathered and killed her. So, so she got the result of a karma of having a very attractive body, but that can lead to disastrous outcomes. So likewise, that's the danger of sansara. And I think recently, I think you, you can search in the internet that uh, a certain thing happened. Uh, one, one male was deported from a country, a um, uh, uh, Middle East country, uh, because he was so attractive. And uh, he, they considered that he is a danger for the marriage life for others. The women were flocking around him and all this. I don't know what kind of a decision was that. <laughs> so, so likewise, it can be like this. So if someone may be wealthy because of the past karmas, but due to some other qualities that he or she has not developed or badly developed in sansara uh, or due to the effect of the Patisandhi karma, maybe someone can be stingy. So, because I think the question comes, the, 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 the paradox here is, he got the wealth, according to the teachings, he was born such person, wealthy person, due to the merits of giving dana. Right? Giving dana. That's, so, if someone has given dana, why he is stingy in this life? That's the, that's, the, that's the paradox we have. If he used to give dana a lot, surely he, he has the quality of giving up, then why he became, suddenly became stingy? That's the nature of sansara. That's the nature of sansara. Because he gave the dana, he has, when he obtained the luxuries in the next life or even in that same life, if we are not aware of this, especially if it is a different life, we are not aware of the kama vipaka sometimes. And we are, uh, if we had a different bhavanga consciousness from that which we perform dana, it's very highly that he can get attached to that. He can be a stingy person. So all the possibilities are there. It's not to say that and also another thing is, a person's wealth is not accumulated only with karma. He had, sometimes people have worked hard to earn. So it's not only because of past karma he got the wealth. So if the wealth was ac accumulated with hard working, then obviously the person would like because he knows that this wealth was not gained easily. So the attachment can happen very easily. So likewise, there can be many reasons for such psychological things. Uh, but please keep in mind, it doesn't bring the Buddhist teachings into a paradox because just one can get a strong wealth, very high wealth, because possibility is there because of giving a one specific dana to a higher being. Think about him offering one meal to the Buddha, a person like Buddha. His, many of his lives could be affected by this. Maybe he has not developed this charitable quality, charity, charity, uh, for a longer period. So, uh, it can happen that a person who got wealth due to karma can still be stingy about his wealth. So, that's the question. So, uh, is there one other question? So, yeah, so, yeah, so the next one is ethnic the same nature. So, the next question is, well, what if a young child is very anxious? He is a young person. So, can we say that it's because of the past life? A young child is anxious. Uh, yes, can be of past lives, but don't come, we should not come into conclusions that they, when you see an anxious style that these are past life effects. That can be something psychologically affecting when he was a child. High possibilities are there if the traits is obtained from the childhood. Very high possibility that can be an effect of the past life. Not immediately past or sansaric life. Possibility is there. Okay, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, thank you for listening. So, uh, so we conclude. We did a lesson about kama pachya. So next week we are going to talk about the remaining rupas affected by karma. So may this merit help us to attain the nibbana. 
soon as possible and also sustaining the buddha sasana buddha sasana chiran tithatu buddha sasana chiran tithatu buddha sasana chiran tithatu sadhu sadhu sadhu